would go from August to September. Now that you bring the context of the ankle injury in, the month off makes so much more sense. He he has no more time to waste. No, <laughs> he's like, I gotta like he's like up. I'm. I gotta start. Like yeah. it's now or never. Like, well, like the tumor turned out to be benign, so like it wasn't cancerous. It was just a growth, right? So like they they get, did surgery, I guess, and then you know maybe gave him a little bit of radiation. And maybe the radiation is uh, what brought out Cushion because a month later after returning, we would get our second match, which is Great Muda taking on Jushin Thunder Liger. You're saying Kishin Liger is post brain tumor Liger? It's like he's his fucking third match. ripped, man. It's like his third match after. Dude, he's fucking <laughs> in great shape. Maybe it's because that single it's hiding that fucking body, but man, no homo. He's fucking. <laughs> he's he's, he's a bad motherfucker. He is fucking jacked to the gills. He really is. Uh, but this would be October twentieth, nineteen ninety six. Literally, like a month after returning. Uh, this is New Japan Super Grade Tag League, which is the tag league of today, just called Super Grade. Uh, it's from Kobe, Kobe, Japan, in the World Hall. 6,800 people in attendance. We would also have a little bit of a, a influence here. Uh, Rick Steiner is in a tag team match against uh, Chono and uh, Saito. Uh, Manabu Nakanishi takes on uh, Ohara. Kojima takes on Tenzan. Hmm. Uh, Kensuke, Kensuke Sasaki. Sasaki. I don't. I don't know. I, well, I don't know who this is. And Ricky Choshu takes on Scott Norton and Hashimoto. So you know this. You no, know, not a not a crazy thing because it is a tag league. But like the match of the night is Muda and Liger. Uh, Muda's in white. I'm sorry, Muda's and Black Lagers and White, good, evil. Right? So, like, they start off by telling the story. And then, like, there's a reason why I mentioned that he was trained with Muda. It's like these guys go back from the day that they were started training in wrestling. You know what I mean? It's like they were in the same class. So, like, it adds a lot to the, uh, just the aura of this match. Is like, at the beginning when, like, Liger's, like, crouched in the ring waiting for Muda. And then Muda comes out and there's that angle where they're both staring at each other. It's like... This is the greatest thing of all time. This is so fucking dope. Because both of these guys are just like the ultimate of theatrics in Japan. It's just, oh, fucking love it. Absolutely love it. Everything about like the first five minutes of this match is just so dope. I thought they laid this match out so differently than any other match. Yeah. And the fact that the student and the teacher plays a role in this match as well, because... Like, in a way where Liger, he's outpacing Muda. Yeah. So, M Muda cannot match up to how Liger fucking moves around this ring, like his footwork and all that kind of jazz. But Muda's fucking tricks frustrates Liger, like, just immediately after Muda ends up getting frustrated with Liger. Yeah. And, like, you'd have that constantly in the match. And well, then that's basically the whole story is Muda trying to get Liger to come outside so he can take advantage of him being outside and get the one up on Liger because Liger's way too fast for Muda. Yeah. And then, right. like, oh, well, I guess we'll get into the, the ring underneath the ring crawling and, like, the <laughs> maze and bullshit like that. I just like, love that was really out of place, like, Muda crawling under the ring. And then, to my knowledge, first ever like spot under the ring that I've ever seen like you know that like it could, had to have been I'm sure we've went under the ring camera wise since but I don't recall anything before 96 of just like a camera going under the ring and showing Liger crawling on his hands it and was knees. so fun it was so fun <laughs> and I was like where did Muda go oh where my god go? we can see the under the ring now there's no hiding it he's <laughs> yeah. he's not here lots of cables <laughs> lots of cables lots of cables <laughs> But yeah, no, uh, I really like that aspect of it. It tells a really good story. Uh, I also really like Muda lunging at fans, too. Like, I was like, oh, that's fucking great. Like a fan, obviously a fan said something. He just ah, does this like little cat hiss that he does. It's fucking dope. I really liked um, when Muda would pile drive Liger through a table over the guardrails. 
Mm. And the table's broken, mm. and he tries to use it again. Oh. He purchases it up to the ring post, and it just falls down, and the crowd just starts giggling. Another instance of giggles. Yeah, yeah. I loved it. I loved it's it. Great. It's great. It's a great contrast, because like, the Japanese crowd is so serious. And if you can get a giggle out of them when it's not like a, I'm just going to use an example, a Toriano match. Right, like where it's not meant to be. It's, it's this is not meant to be funny. It's their version of you fucked up. Yeah, it's yeah. just a giggle. Yeah, yeah, I, I'd imagine so. I'd imagine so because I mean, in Japan, like everything is so strict there. It's like a little giggle. I think like, it's respectful whatever. more than like serious and like strict. Yeah, I think it's like a sign of respect. Just like the whole New Japan not giving anybody outside the fuck company title. <laughs> you can have the never title. Because you're never, never getting the IWGP <laughs> Thank <you>. title. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where you were going with that one. <laughs> That's what I've always seen the never title as. It's like, oh, they give the never title to the dude that they were never going to give you the title. It's like then Shingo Takagi wins the title. And it's like, okay, well, that's kind of shit. <laughs> Whatever. They had no choice. Yeah, they really didn't. Osprey injured. Abushi injured. It's like, who do we give it to? Tanahashi? Evil? Ooh, no. <laughs> Not again. <laughs> Not again. We can't do that one again. But no. Uh, the you know, Muda would use these tactics that we alluded to, uh, choking him with, uh, with a broom. Uh, and then he yeah, would, you know, OG cleaner. Yeah. And then he would, you know, pile, you know, just rip away the match, try to try to just hurt Liger. And so then he would rip off the mask and this would... This is ultimately, nobody knows what's going on. He's just lid there in the ground, you know, and Muda just walking around doing his thing. He comes back, picks up Liger, and he just spits mist in the face of Muda and just intensely goes, all the time. <laughs> and I really fucking And then he, it. like, purposely rips off his whole torso <laughs> bodysuit, and he's got all these tribal tats, and he's got his shoulder pieces still on him, and mm -hmm. it's just... An iconic yep. visual. And his face is painted white. and he's A kiss-like figure, you know? Akin to it. Well, I mean, like, you see it in the corner of the, the, the hard thing, right? Like, that's the further That's the full reveal, yeah. Of, of Kushin when he would have a, a match as... Because he would do a run as he, Kushin Liger for a little tiny bit. He is Muda's doppelganger, like, 100%. Oh, yeah, no, it's, he, yeah, that's, that's what happens when he enters the Red Room. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> this, this is what replaces them. <laughs> so this, though, I like how they replayed this spot when he faced Minoru Suzuki a couple years ago as Kishin yeah. Liger. But when Liger has the spike and there's a, there's a fucking table in the corner, um, he's spiking Muda in the head, he's choking him, he's loosening the pads, he pile drivers Muda, goes up with a chair and he wraps a fucking chair around Muda's fucking head. Yep. And then, yeah, so the table's in the corner, Muda gets Irish whipped into the corner, and Liger gets a head start. He dives at Muda. Muda gets out of the way and he fucking stabs, stabs the table. The yeah, the table's great. It's great. It's and seeing like, the, the visual. This is the difference in Liger, though. You know what I mean? Like, And everything Liger did after that was on Liger. Everything was with malicious intent. Mm -hmm. Everything just seemed more serious. Gone were the flashy moves. It's just, I'm going to beat your fucking ass. Kill. He's yeah. in for the kill. Yeah. yeah. As, as he proved with the, with the spike or the scissors, whatever the fuck it was. And as he misses the stab into the table on Muda. Muda busts out red mist instead of green mist. He does. The dreaded red mist. Not as dreaded as black mist, but... Well, no. The black mist, that's, that's, that's almost certain death, but uh, I don't think... Uh, I don't think Malachi Black uses the right black mist. No. He must not. No. Kayfabe aside. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that must just be like black metal ink or something like that. It's just tar from his lungs yeah he yeah. smokes a lot yeah it must be must be must be has to be whatever the blackness that's coming from his eyes also secretes yeah. from his mouth too yeah um but no like, this is an iconic match you know, this match while it might not be the quote-unquote greatest work rate match of all time uh there's really not much of a work rate in it at all it's more of a brawl but a 
tremendous amount of storytelling mm-hmm. takes place in this match. And without without storytelling, you can't have wrestling. You know what I mean? Like, and obviously, without wrestling, you can't have wrestling. But you know, you need both of it for it to really shine. And and both of these guys are one hundred percent compatible in having a wrestling match to let the story shine through. And it's, it's great. And you can tell Muda's knees aren't the greatest here. You know what I mean? He's starting to rely on smoke and mirrors, and he'll just break out the one moon salt and then call her good. You know, because that's how he would end up beating Liger. He would stab him with his own utensil and then moon salt. Uh, but no, it's a fantastic match, absolutely fantastic. Yeah, I thought it was just really unique. You know, like it, it just so creative and the way that they paced it out. I, I loved yeah, every moment. I agree. I agree. Like it, it starts off a little slow, and then but like it's 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 Muda trying to just like dismantle Liger. And, Knowing after you've seen it before, it's like, oh, Lager's going to get his revenge. <laughs> but yeah, no, he would make uh, three more appearances as Kushin Lager. Uh, he would uh, take on uh, Bad Boy Hito in New Ooh. Japan in 2006. The story was that Hito had cut a piece of Lager's hair and Lager vowed revenge, so he transformed into Kushin Lager. Uh, June 16th, 2012, in Dominion. Liger made a rare appearance at, as Kushin Liger when he and Tiger Mask defeated Suzuki Goon, which was Tai Chi and Taka Michinoku, to win the vacant IWGP Junior Heavyweight Championship. This is because Tai Chi had cut up pieces of his mask. And then again, obviously, in 2019 against Suzuki. And uh, Suzuki wouldn't do anything with his mask. Just taunted he was just like Liger like you're retiring you do not belong in the ring with me what are you doing what are you thinking and he would just go to Mon go to Mon until he would come out as Kushin Liger and it's probably like the scariest incarnation of Kushin Liger he's all bald and just looks like a dead baby <laughs> <laughs> oh Tyler you okay so if you want to talk about dead babies <laughs> I didn't say that but okay David Bowie released an unreleased album from 2001 called Toy and it's a photo of a baby with a very 2001-like photoshopped David Bowie face on the baby. <laughs> now that's a that's a that's, that's a yeah, very creepy. That's creepy. That is a dead baby. That is dead. Yeah, baby. I wasn't getting vulgar with it. It was. <laughs> everyone turned off the podcast. It was like, oh that. God damn, Travis. God damn. <laughs> all of our all of our fans. God damn. God, God damn. God damn. Johnny uh, Utah. <laughs> Want to watch me? Hair, watch me comb my hair really, really fast. Uh, but uh, Travis, do you uh, you have anything else to say about this match before we uh, take a break and go? It was, it was my favorite one. Of the of the three that yeah, we watched, that was my favorite I one. I see that this this is a it's a mystifying match. You know what I mean? Mystifying. You watch, you yes. watch it and you're like, "Fuck!" There's so much. Is is chef's kiss? Yeah, just salt bay that bitch. It's perfect. <laughs> uh, but uh, up next on the Federation, we are we are going to inject some honor into the show. But first, 